night time. The loneliest time. When everyone is alone with their thoughts. And you dare to look deep into your own soul, cause that TV's broken. <laughs> no man is an island, they say. But some of us are a bit like Wilson's promontory. You know that wild bit up in a corner that's really hard to get to? You start to think maybe you're going a bit mad. You start having strange thoughts. You start hearing odd noises. You start talking to yourself. <laughs> Was that true? I no, nothing, nothing. I was, I was just, I was just talking to myself. <laughs> got a bit mad. What do you mean I'm going a little bit mad? What do you I mean by that? What's him up? Yeah, well, everyone what? goes around a twist when their TV's busted. I've seen it a hundred times. They do? Yeah, sure. Oh, I knew this one woman. She was totally gaga. When a TV broke down, <laughs> she ended up watching a washing machine all day long. <laughs> she probably liked soap operas. <laughs> She was on the very edge of a total mental breakdown. But you fixed her TV and then she was all right again, eh? No, mate. No, she completely lost it. She could never watch a story after that that didn't end in a rinse cycle. <laughs> no, eventually they had to take her away. Ah, uh, here's your problem. What? What is it? I'd say that's a cocoa pop, Chief. <laughs> Gee, I thought they put really complicated electronic things into television. <laughs> so what, what does the Cocoa Pop do? Well, it stuffs up your circuitry. Then why do they put it there? <laughs> Nobody put it there. Well, how did it get there? Yeah, well, your guess is as good as mine, isn't it? What's your guess? <clears throat> Well, I'd say this Coco Popper came airborne, bounced off that wall and went in the vent in the back of the TV. That's a really good guess. <laughs> My guess is that it happened last Thursday when I was eating a big bowl of Coco Pops in front of the TV and this really funny cartoon came on. <laughs> and you know when you got a mouthful of uh, Coco Pops and you're half corn to swallow, <laughs> but then you laugh really loudly? Coco <laughs> pops fly everywhere, yeah? Yeah, and some of them go right up the back of your nose, so you've got to stick one finger up one nostril and then blow. <laughs> but no, you're right, most of them just go everywhere. It must have been a very funny cartoon. <laughs> <laughs> it was. <laughs> so yeah, Fred and Barney went to the circus. <laughs> and this clown tricks Barney into being shot out of a cannon. And Fred's meant to catch Barney, and guess what? He didn't. <laughs> He does all his own stunts, you know. Who? <laughs> Barney. Very good actor. <clears throat> Listen, I can see you're under a great deal of stress, so I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to make this job top priority and I'm going to have you back on the air by the day after tomorrow. The, the day after tomorrow? <laughs> I've got to take the set back to the shop and replace a couple of chips. But I don't need chips with cocoa pops. <laughs> no, mate, these are micro chips. Ah. All oh, right, now I'm with you. <laughs> Those McCain ones you do in the microwave. Nah. If I were you, I wouldn't worry too much about going around the bend. No? Good. Good. Oh, you're around the bend across the street over the fence and about to hit the open road. <laughs> Tell me, Tom, Tom, do you think I need help? Well, the way I look at it, Colin, it's like this. The human brain is a little bit like a TV set. Yeah, but it's not going to open up the back of my head, are you? No. <laughs> that'd be silly, Colin. That'd be stupid. Yeah. <laughs> Any better? No. Yeah, it never seems to work on a TV either. Let's try this, mate. You stop it! <laughs> what do you mean the, the, the brain is like a television set? Well, when you're on the channel, your reception's fine, but sometimes you go off it and your picture gets a bit fuzzy and crackly. And that's when you start to lose it. Yeah, well, a couple of twists of the old knob and you're back on it again. <laughs> Sometimes you might be off the channel, but it's only because you're twisting your knob onto a new channel. Exactly! <laughs> so that means that it's okay to be crazy sometimes. In fact, if you think you're mad, it's generally proof you're not. And if you think you're not mad, it probably means that you are. <laughs>
But then before when I thought I was mad, I was probably better off because I didn't think I was. But but now that you've told me that you don't think that I'm mad and I analyse it, then I probably am. You were probably right in the first place. <laughs> Because it doesn't matter how much you change your channel if your TV is not plugged in in the first place. Yes. <laughs> I. <laughs> and this one looks like an ink blot. <laughs> an ink blot. <laughs> A bigger ink blot. <laughs> Two nuns wrestling a crocodile. <laughs> An ink blot. Another ink blot. Oh, this is ridiculous. Here I am on the verge of becoming the raving loony of Pittswood and I can't even prove it. <laughs> Next I'll probably start hearing weird, horrible devil noises in my head. <laughs> Johnny me, Gavin, where are you? In the, in the kitchen. Oh, there you oh. are. I thought I'd pop over and watch a bit of television. The power bills at my place are astronomical. Dear, well, I'm afraid I haven't got the television. It's down the shops getting some chips. <laughs> but there's some very interesting washing on if you'd like to go and wash. Are you all right, Kelvin? Yeah, I feel all right at the moment, which is part of my worry. But it's okay, because I think I'm just about to start going mad again. Oh, don't be stupid, Gordon. You're as sane as I am. Yep, there I go. <laughs> Shame on you. Just because the television's not here doesn't mean you can sit around drawing filthy pictures. <laughs> Smut! All of it. This and this. Except for this nice one with the two nuns and the crocodile. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, I'm confiscating that for a start. Now, it's a mental test. It's so that you can examine your own sub-unconsciousness. What's wrong with a nice nap? Yeah, I tried that, but I had a really weird dream with these horrible symbols. Oh? Oh, we all have those. Like trains going through tunnels and tall, firm towers thrusting into the sky. No. Nah. Oh. What sort of symbols, then? Brown metal ones. I dreamt there was in this marching band. The guy behind me kept whacking me in the back of the head with his cymbals just because I was out of step. <laughs> Big weird stuff, eh? No weirder than leaving pornographic pictures lying around the kitchen table so that any poor, unsuspecting old woman who happens to be passing has to confiscate them. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry, Mrs. Malloy. Just haven't been myself lately. When did you get this insane idea that you're mad? When I was in the bank waiting in line there, it made me remember that one in seven persons need mental care. Why did waiting at the bank remind you? I was the seventh in line. Yes, I see. The other people looked okay, so I knew it was either me or the guy in the Bermuda shorts with the duck. So what did you do? Well... You know, I tried to ease the tension a bit and relax everyone, so I yelled out, Hey, everybody, one of us here's a loony. <laughs> <laughs> it didn't work. They all started shuffling and looking real nervous and staring at me. Seven pairs of eyes staring at me. Six people and a duck. <laughs> they know. You have to have confidence in yourself. You have to learn to be your own person. When was the last time you said to yourself, I am Kelvin Caliper and I matter? I don't think I've ever said that. Exactly. You've got an identity problem, Crispin. So what should I do about it? Talk to a professional. Well, I had a long talk with Tom yesterday. Do you think that'd help? Is he a psychiatrist? No, he's a TV repairman, but he charges by the hour. No, no. No, I suppose not. But don't worry, your angel of mercy is here now. You go and rest, and I shall chase up a qualified psychiatrist. Do you think I really need to see one? Most definitely. I did warn you that living on your own might lead to this. Go and rest. Yeah. That's a boy. <laughs> Oh, 
will I? You shouldn't be resting when you're having a nervous breakdown. <laughs> no, I'm not better now. Nonsense. You're seriously disturbed. Yeah, well, I was then. <laughs> Don't worry, Corbin. Your mental torment is almost at an end. I've made an appointment for you at the Pittswood Grove Psychiatric Clinic. What? That place with all the falling down buildings and the trees. That's the one. They want you to go over and, and see one of the doctors. <laughs> they thought it was me having the breakdown. <laughs> I screamed at them for nearly a quarter of an hour. Told them I wasn't. This is for I really feel a lot better now. I've been reading this book about how to relax. It's really good. I fall asleep halfway through chapter one every time. It's not as simple as that to get better. They might have to do that thing with the jumper leads. Oh, I don't like the sound of that. Yes, well, I've got something here that will cheer you up. Oh, a woolly pullover. Yes. Put on, come on. Thanks, Mrs. Fuller. <sighs> Go. Oh, where gorillas wear or <laughs> I needed it for Vic, but I misread the pattern. At least it'll stop you picking your nose. <laughs> you don't think it looks a bit much like a straight jacket? Do well, you? I thought if you were gonna stay out at the clinic, you'd have something nice to wear. wrong <laughs> impression. It's not a job interview, Calvin. <clears throat> I believe in you. Thanks, Mrs. Boy. As long as you don't turn violent on me. No, I won't do that. I mean, I don't want you coming over to my place and doing me in in some sicko way. But to Mrs. Fuller, I couldn't possibly do that. That's reassuring. You're always over here for a start. <laughs> Sorry, madam, but you can't come back. But I'm an expert in this particular case. It is best. No, Cameron, I really should... best if our visitors had their first little chat with the doctor on their own. Dr. McNamara? Uh is not in. Look, why don't you come and wait in here? I'm sure he's just been held up in group therapy minutes or so and you, but I'm madam, like... can wait in the canteen if you like. Stay away from the jump leads, Kevin! Letter opener down. <laughs> oh, I'm Please put the letter opener down. It's very sharp. Why? <laughs> so, we are having difficulty coping. You too, end your telly breakdown. <laughs> Sit. Close your eyes. And touch your nose with your finger. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Gee, you'd have to be pretty far gone not to know where your nose is, eh? <laughs> Unless, of course, you spoke a different different language where nose meant something else like the fleshy part on the back of your thigh or... Sit. Um... <laughs> I'm going to test the sensitivity of your nervous system. Cross your legs. Yes, and I'm going to keep them crossed till I find out exactly what you're going to be doing with that mallet. <laughs> I'm just going to test your reflexes. <clears throat> They're pretty good. Colin, why is it you dress in that particular fashion? The uh, artificial bulkiness in the arms. Is it an assertion of virility or dominance? Or a direct thing about me, your, your therapist? No, it's because Mrs. Fuller told me to. <laughs> Mrs. Fuller? I see. Uh, this Mrs. Fuller is a voice that you hear? <laughs> All right. <laughs> and this voice tells you things to do. Good, she never gives up. She goes on and on. I try to ignore her, but she keeps coming back. 
Is Mrs. Fuller here now? Yes. <laughs> but the nurse told, told her that you wouldn't be able to see her. <laughs> of course. So when are we going to start talking about me? In time, but first, let's play a word game. Goody. <laughs> <laughs> it's called word association. I say a word, and you say the first word that comes into your head. Kangaroo. <laughs> I say the word first, then you say the first word that comes into your head. For instance, if I say cat, then you would say cat. <laughs> no, no, you don't repeat the word. You say the first word you think of. But if you said it and I hear it, then that's going to be the first word that I think of. You don't understand. I want you to say the first word it reminds you of. Then uh, you want me to say the second word that I think of. All right, then. Say the second word you think of. If I said dog, you would say... Cat. Good. You say cat because the word dog reminds you of cat. No, I said it because I was thinking of the first question you asked. <laughs> Say any word. Uh, the, the, the mother. Brother. Sister. Blister. <laughs> Large. Bad. No, I don't want you to rhyme them. Oh. <laughs> I see. So you, you want to say a word and then have me say a completely different word. Right. Then. Pardon? Me. Enough. Say it. Stop it. Two words, I win. <laughs> You said three words. You just said four. Nah. Look at that six, seven counting. Nah. That's cheating. No, it's not. Yes, it is. It isn't. <laughs> Why are you undermining my authority? Because you just use it to boss people around. But I'm the doctor. <laughs> I bet you can't spell schizophrenia. S-E-H-I-Z-O-P-H-R-E-N-I-A. That's not fair. You can't spell that. That's one of my words. <laughs> Get a grip on yourself, Mac Damara. You're under a lot of strain. <laughs> you know, talking to yourself's the first sign of madness. I don't have to prove I'm sane to you. Oh, fair's fair. I had to prove it to you. <laughs> I'm sorry, Colin. I've been under a great deal of pressure. I haven't been able to have a rest for about two years. I, I think I'm going mad. You know, the way I see it, the mind is like a television set. <laughs> sometimes you're on the right channel and sometimes you're not. That's a very interesting insight. Yes, you see, in your case, you could just be in between channels. That's a particularly powerful psychological analogy. Yeah, I know, thanks. Oh, thank you, Colin. I, I feel a great weight has been lifted off my shoulders. And, of course, it doesn't matter how often you change channels if your TV's not plugged in in the first place. Yeah. <laughs> Colin, would it be possible to see you again? I'm sure it could be. How about the same time next week? Oh, that'd be fine. Goodbye. Bye-bye. <laughs> <laughs> this is my office. Mm. <laughs> well, there you go, pal. Just make sure the earl's connected and you'll be as right as rain. Yeah, you know, it's funny, Tom. I'm not missing the TV as much as I used to. Yeah, I noticed you're not twitching like you used to, Cole. Yeah, I went down to the clinic the other day and it made me realise something. I'm not crazy, just different. Yeah, you're not wrong there, mate. <laughs> I'm going back there next week too. What for if you haven't got a problem? <laughs> not as a patient. As a volunteer helper, Tom. Guiding people, <laughs> talking with them, being involved in group discussions, that kind of thing. You know, the doctor said he'd never met anyone like me who could bring other people out of their delusions really fast. Is it? Uh, Mrs. Fuller's been invited back too. She's going to be involved in some group discussions. Just her and three doctors. I'll tell you what, I better just make sure the telly's plugged in, eh, mate? Yeah, because it doesn't matter how many times you change the channels if the it's telly's not, not plugged, plugged in, in, in the, the first place. place. <laughs> 
Well, what's it like to have your telly fixed, Cole? <laughs> yes, good. Do you want to stick around and watch the movie for a while? Yeah, all right. What is it? Ah, Coco Pops. <laughs> nah, Psycho. Tonight on 10, The Man Returns, and Australia's greatest folk legend continues. The love story, the adventure, the courage. Tom Berlinson, Sigrid Thornton and Brian Dennehy star in The Man from Snowy River 2. 8.30 tonight on 10. Coming up next, The Wonder Years.